What happens when your transmission towers get struck by lightning? Is it gonna be like, ah, it's all fine? Or is it gonna go kaboom? To understand what really happens, we need to understand transmission lines a bit better. Transmission lines usually come in a set of three. As you can see in this diagram, that's one line. A second line will be the center one, goes into the middle. And the third line on the right side, red, yellow, blue. This is because modern AC transmission network operates most efficiently in a set of three, three phases, red, yellow, blue. So these three are what you call the current carrying conductors. The current carrying conductors. And these are the ones that are energized. You understand that these three, is one, two, three, are the ones that are energized. While the rest of it is actually not energized. Let me choose another color. Yeah, let's see green. Green is an earth color. Yeah, it's not. A, it's a very good color. So let's say the tower, this tower here, is actually not energized. It does not have is not experienced the voltage or the same voltage as the three lines so this is actually all connected to the earth it's connected to the ground and this is a uh, low voltage these are not energized and if you touch it theoretically you're okay there is also a third component a third component and that component now oh, let's see yeah, orange is bad here okay light blue let's go dark blue yeah the third component is this this thingy the separators what you call the insulators these are what separates voltage from any uh, electricity from the line jumping onto the tower so in by having this in place it provides a separation and so the electricity goes from the line and continues to the line it does not jump onto the tower and that is very important that's what keeps the line to the li line voltage to the line and tower separate as you can see here there's also a set of three so this is one circuit and this is two circuits two circuits the lines are there and they are separated by these insulators and the towers are not are not energized they do not carry any current so here comes a part where it's a bit more complicated the important thing is that where does the lightning strike where does lightning strike if the lightning strikes the lines lines carry current carry power they carry current and carry power while the tower body do not carry power so by striking if the lightning strikes a line it has one effect if it strikes the tower it has a secondary effect so what happens when it strikes a line let's go let's strike a line the lines what happens if it strikes a line the lightning hits kaboom it hits one of the current carrying conductor lines current carrying conductors let's use yellow actually hits the line. The line naturally has a voltage. If you have lightning striking the line, you have a certain injection of voltage and voltage increases. When this voltage increase, it causes danger. In what sense? In the sense that this little separator, this that thing that separates 
the line from the tower is designed to separate the operating rotations to separate the operating voltage is not designed to withstand extremely high voltage caused by lightning so when the lightning strikes the line a flash over is very likely to occur the certain voltage is close to the voltage goes too high and it looks for ways to exit ways to run it runs it hits most likely the tower body and it finds a way to the earth when this path has been manifested then it sucks in power and current from anywhere else and straight goes to the line because and that's what called a short circuit and that's what you call a fault and that's what is not uh, that, that's bad very very bad and we do not want this this will cause all your power quality issues, your voltage, your dips in your light, your voltage dips, and all those kind of bad things. So what happens here is that when this phenomena happens, your breaker will open at both ends. So the switch, it opens, it opens, it disconnects, and these lines become de-energized. De-energize. That would solve the problem. When the lines de-energize, there's no more current flowing through, and everything is clean. This usually takes very little, uh, very little time, and that's why there is a self-built-in mechanism to self-heal. That if it opens for a while and then it closes back, it closes back. To allow current the same the nominal operating power and current to flow back by this time the lightning and is gone and there's no more voltage and everything is fine to operate again this mechanism is called auto reclose auto reclose so when lightning hits the line the line trips breaker open the line gets the energized and when the line gets the energized it recloses back and if there is no more high voltage or no more fault then it's successful auto reclose successful and it continues to operate like normal if there is still a fault or still a path to ground a path then auto reclose will open again you open again and you lock out it won't you won't reclose anymore it just stay open that is the case if it hits the line voltage but what if it hits the tower body? So lightning comes in. Kapow! Hits the tower body. It did not hit. It did not strike the line. The lines are still okay. Like, just, oh my god. Okay. The lines are still okay. All six circuit one and circuit two, they are both still intact. It hits the body. The best thing here is that the body it behaves like a lightning rod. Let's use red. You conduct the current and pass it to the ground and it disperse it, leaving the lines by design. It leaves the lines unaffected. That is by design. But there are some cases where the lightning is a very high magnitude. High magnitude. And the tower, of course, tower has a resistance itself. And the most weak point is the tower footing resistance. Power footing resistance. This may this is the joint part and that's the weak point. So V equals to IR. The lightning contributes the I, the current. The R is the TFR, tower footing resistance. If the R is somewhat high 
and the, and the lightning is of a high magnitude by default you're going to have a high voltage very high voltage when you have high voltage here it may have problems it may cause problems there's a chance where this little separator the separator it may break down it may not be able to withstand this high voltage and that causes if that does break down it causes the lightning it strikes here it tries to go grounded but there is a weak point there is um, too much resistance resistance too much so the current the lightning current goes back up and flashes onto the line or just flashes onto the line this actually creates a path from the line to the body it by is able to break down this separator and a similar effect a similar phenomenon the current from the line since this path is created current from the line it gets sucked in to the ground so it keeps feeding this fault because this created a path already and there's a, a path to ground here and this will also cause a similar issue in terms of lightning power quality voltage issues here and there but the thing is here this phenomenon is called backflash oh 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 let, let, let me come in okay back flash okay okay that's better backflash the earlier one is called flashover flash over the full, full term is called back flash over but back flash is enough a similar the same mechanism auto recluse may be used here maybe it's still to be deployed it will still solve the issue auto recluse where the breaker here opens it opens disconnects the line this line will get disconnected fault is gone no longer any path to ground no longer any path re-energizes re-energizes back zut, zut. business as usual no issue so yes in conclusion lightning is bad for transmission towers but transmission towers are equipped to prevent lightning one of it is they have an earth shoot wire at the top earth shoot wire Usually, there is a wire on top here and this wire is connected directly to the tower. There is no separator. You see, in this case, wait, let me... Hmm, there isn't anyone here as well. Ah, okay, this is the most best example here. There's one wire at top. And this wire is connected directly to the tower. There is no joints. There is no this kind of separated joint. So this wire actually wants to help shield. It's called an earth shield wire. Earth shield wire. It does not carry conduct. It does not carry. It's not designed. Not designed. To carry power the ones that carry power are in these groups of three one two three one two three these are the ones that's designed to carry power the one on top is not designed to carry power it's designed to shield the rest it's going to cover the rest so that when lightning hits it picks the top one the easier to hit and this one directly channels this lightning straight to the tower leaving the rest of the lines unaffected so yes those are the ways that you can actually defend or cover yourself in terms of design against lightning lightning protection there we go